Quite frequently I hear a term used to describe 3D printers. The term used is, this is a beast, and the term is usually placed on machines that really and truly do not deserve such a term. So when it came to thinking about describing the rat rig VCore 3, beast doesn't even come close. This thing's a monster! Three D printing has come a long way over the past few years, and making a video about just another three D printer couldn't be my only focus. The Ratrig V Core Three is a premium machine, well thought out and engineered, and you don't need to be a black belt in martial arts to put this thing together. But it certainly helps. As far as I can see, with the V Core Three, the only limitation is your ability to think bigger. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time you are watching this. This is Sam Prentice Makes Things Happen. I'm Sam Prentice back once again making it happen. And today we are looking at the Rat Rig V Core 3. Thank you first and foremost to Rat Rig for sending me the gubbings to make this printer. It's phenomenal, by the way. And, you know, there's a lot of videos being made right now about companies sending 3D printers out to people for influence and their buy-in and all that kind of stuff. I'm not being paid to make this particular type of content. They've given me no pressure at all, but there is a real good behind the scenes build up to why I got involved with this particular company and why I wanted to build this type of machine. And that all goes down to my background, which is 3D printing and 3D printing specifically robots. My content generally tends to be around reviewing 3D printers and that's almost by accident. My real pure passion is actually building robots like these ones. So that being the case, I had three Creality CR10 S5s, which is the 500, 500, 500 style 3D printers, which are the Cartesian bed slider variety that I'm sure most of us are well versed in now. Now that particular printer was really good and I actually got some really good successful prints out of it, but then things started to go wrong and I needed to start spending more money on boards and hot ends and a variety of other things that, to be honest, it was throwing good money after bad. That didn't work particularly well for me. So I started to look out into the marketplace for a 3D printer, which worked for me. And that being said, it might not work for you, but that very much depends on what you're trying to do and what your background is and what you're trying to print and the materials that you're trying to use, this might be way, way out of your remit. It might be a cost thing. It might be a usage thing, but I 3D print every day across multiple printers. So having a good, sound, reliable 3D printer is certainly one of my main concerns. So back in December of 2020, Ratrig announced the latest adaptation of their Core XY V-Core system, the V-Core 3. Labelled, of course, as the ultimate Core XY, developed inside the ever-growing community. To say that this is impressive is an understatement. The team behind this have worked incredibly hard to ensure that this revision and release and everything required for this to succeed as a premium printer is just so. So luckily enough for me, Ratrig sent me the bones of a V-Core 3 and I've added my own hardware in the form of an SKR 1.2 Pro board and TMC 2226s, a Bontec BMG M with Slice Engineering Mosquito. What's this really all about? Well, you are the designer, Ratrig provides you with the foundations and you add the infrastructure. If you've owned a 3D printer in the past or over the last couple of years, you'll know that every 3D printer that's produced seems to have an element that normally falls short. In my experience, things like heat creep, inadequate bed heaters, printer speed, ability to print some materials, cheap component parts, noise, bed surface, and limited or locked software features. Ratrig unlocks this entire industry. And it exposes one big area, of course, is the false economy to buy a 3D printer for a specific project or task, only to then have to modify it to fit your needs. The VCore 3 is a high-end bespoke solution for 3D printing for projects I undertake, and it's going to be extremely well used by me. Oh boy, so what do we have so far? A high-end, bespoke, customizable, dependable 3D printing solution with good, active, healthy community and the community that are leading onward development for the vCore system, limited by your own imagination and, dare I say, your ability to learn. But how does it print? Well, the Ratrig is a fast Core XY printer and depending on the setup that you choose, this will very much determine the overall speed and quality that you can achieve. 
Now I can't honestly tell you that this was the easiest build that I've ever done and that it wasn't a struggle, but I will say the assembly printing parts and the selection of parts that I wanted to go into this build were very, very straightforward, mostly in part to how well the Rat Rig and the Rat Rig team have amalgamated all the files and documents into one place. This includes the brilliant EVA system, which has been developed by Pavel, and he's done a fantastic job with this whole design. He's a huge asset to the Rat Rig team, and I'm sure he will continue to excel in this space. What EVA allows you to do is be in control of your preferred hot end and extruder. If you're an E3D fan, or like me, a slice engineering champion, or fancy yourself as a bit of a rogue with the dragon, there are many, many options that you can undertake. BMG, LGX, Orbiter, Whatever way that you want this to go, I'm sure there's going to be a very, very good solution on the AVA system for you. Make sure you definitely check that out. The links, of course, will be in the description. So the elements I would say that I really struggled on were not fully understanding the software. And of course, it was very, very different to what I'm used to, which is usually Marlin. Using the SKR Pro and a Raspberry Pi was very, very new to me. However, once I installed the vCore OS onto the Pi, I was left with the dilemma of what to do next. This was mainly down to not fully understanding the software function when comparing it to Marlin. This for me was the biggest challenge. And when you've spent the price of a Creality CR6 on just the hot end components, it's a little bit demoralizing. That being said though, I was able to speak to Mikel and show him what was happening with my system and it was easy to resolve that all in the end. Additionally, re-watching Michael from Teaching Tech's video on configuring the accelerometer working out the input shaping left me in a really really good place. I'd say that Clipper is a steep learning curve and it's just different to what I've used before. That being said if there isn't already a really good video on how to install and set this up then I might jump on it while working on the vCore 1.3 which is the upgraded version of the vCore Pro which is the old printer that I've got also from RatRig. So what do you get for the money that you don't already have? Which was a question that was posed to me a little while ago that I've kind of based this whole video around. Well, a headache, a bad temper, well maybe, or keen karate skills possibly. My best advice would be to take your time and really enjoy the build. This is a 3D printer that your dedication and time will mean more to you in the long run. So you have a choice of three different printers. Just before I get into that, look at this, look at this. How cool is that? The print quality on that is epic first print off of literally just following Michael from Teaching Tech's video on uh, input shaping and uh, yeah pulls apart in fact I couldn't help myself I'm printing on it right now in fact I've been printing on it for days and days and days and to be honest it hasn't stopped and in fact it's probably put in delays on me actually physically making the end of this video so very sorry to the guys at Rat Rig, but I'm using the gear guys and it's uh, you know phenomenal absolutely brilliant I love this printer it's amazing so Let's get into the next part. You've got three different sizes. You've got small, medium, large, 300, 400, and 500. The AVA system, as I've said before, allows you to pick your poison with extruder and hot end. And then, of course, the support that's there, the community on the Discord server and also the Facebook group is really, really good. And again, just flick through this. That I have never seen in any other 3D printing company such dedication to how much information and flexibility these guys are putting into this particular model and the great news is is that you don't have to you don't have to buy from them you could if you've got the infrastructure to be able to cut the extrusion yourself you could make one of these without doing any of this stuff the 3d printing parts are available but to be honest why would you go anywhere else? And it was one of the things that really swung me towards the rat rig infrastructure was the fact that I could just purchase this. It wasn't coming from China. Some of the very first conversations that I had with rat rig were so positive, I just couldn't go anywhere else. It's probably worth mentioning as well that the vCore 3 isn't the only printer that rat rig do. They also do one called the vCast, which is a general Cartesian style printer, but better. And they also do one called the vMinion, which is just about to come out. So we're back to that question again is what do you get for the money that you don't already have? Well, you do get this awesome kinematic bed as a good example. So while making this video, I reached out to RatRig and lucky for me, and they are insanely busy at the moment with orders and processing and stuff. Sonnet, one of the MDs, managed to reply to me with this video. Hi everyone, this is Sonnet from RatRig. I'm here in our print farm next to a Vcore 3500. At Sam's request, I'm going to be explaining 
Uh, one of the most uh, controversial and discussed features of the Vicor 3, the three-point kinematic bed. So why did we choose this design that is so different for a kinematic bed? There's a, there are two uh, fundamental reasons. The first one has to do with thermal expansion. So a bed plate, as it's heated up, it's going to expand. And if the mounting points of the bed can't move, what's going to happen is that the bed has no place to expand and it will have to work either upwards or downwards. And this is not something you want because obviously you want, to, you want your surface to remain as flat as possible. So for this reason, the Vicor 3, the bed doesn't have any type of constraint in terms of its mounting points. Instead, it uses spheres that are guided by these little dowel pins that act like a pair of rails when the sphere sits on top of them. What happens is, as the bed expands, the sphere can move outwards. It moves outwards as it expands, but it can't move laterally at all without the thermal expansion. So this is a very rigid fixation method, but at the same time it allows the, the mounting points to move, and that's very important. The other reason for this design, which has three motors as mounting points, is that when you have three mounting points for the bed, you can determine the leveling of the bed exclusively via your electronics. So you can move the motors uh, up or down to make sure that you also level your bed as fast as you can. It's a very, very uh, efficient uh, way of leveling your bed. So, this is it. In terms of what has been impressing us the most about the Vicor launch, well, the demand has been, you know, overwhelming. Right now we have a lead time of six weeks because we got an avalanche of orders. We're working very hard to ship these orders as fast as we can. Uh, but it has been really a wild, a wild ride. And I hope you stick with us while we ramp up the core 3 production. Cheers. Bye-bye. Thank you, Sonnet. Sonnet, an absolute legend in the uh, 3D printing space right now, and he's doing some incredible things. Don't forget, guys, they are a small business, and that comes with some perils and pitfalls, like not being able to get orders out as quick as you'd like, really taking the time and dedication to ship these things out. So if you're getting frustrated because you've not got your order yet, just hold on because you won't regret it. Trust me. The benefits of this printer, I feel, are really poles apart from the stock solution. I've been so impressed on how fast you can run this printer without affecting the quality of the print. Having upgraded pretty much all of my 3D printers, I picked what I felt was the best component parts in order to get the best output for my projects. There is no need to buy that same component twice. The development really falls on you. This printer is about having the choice before you build, it's about planning and the challenge of building a 3D printer yourself. So what about the price? So price is a very interesting area for the Ratrig v Core 3. Ratrig, of course, can just supply you with the bare bones and component parts that you're going to need in order to build the frame, and you can add your own components. However, they do also have a default configuration, which personally, I probably wouldn't go with, but it's there if you decide that that's the machine that you want to build, and of course, they will give you the full support. Uh, for that as well and literally the app options are very very simple at the bottom 300 400 500 and depending on what you want to go with you can basically pop that in and hit the add to cart button the other alternative of course as i mentioned before is you can pick exactly what you want and you don't necessarily have to pick any of this stuff if you can source this yourself that's cool you can do that that's not a problem at all however if you'd rather just get it all in one place all the stuff done and dusted then that's available as well now, personally, I decided to get my own components. That did lend to a couple of small problems, uh, especially when it came to things like the LDO motors. Now, if anything, I would suggest that you do get the motors with the package. Number of reasons for that, but the speed efficiency on the LDOs is certainly better than some of the others that I was trying. So, and I basically upgraded to those. So that's it in a nutshell. And that puts us out around about 684 euros. Then of course you've got shipping on top of that and probably tax as well. So let me just add that to cart. Yeah, so we're looking at around about 700 euros plus the shipping then as well. 
uh, depending on where you are they ship all over the world so that's fantastic can of course add a coupon here which will give you $25 off or 25 euros off but this is the configuration that I would probably go with and then on top of that I would then add yourself probably one of these octopuses and that being the case you can get the uh, stepper drivers as well I went with the uh, 2226s on mine but you can get that for around about $50 or £50 pounds. Uh, and the printer ends up being around about £525. But then you're going to have to add some extra stuff. Now, the LGX is what I'm going to be upgrading to, or I may end up using on the 1.3. I'm using a Bontec BMG M on this at the moment. And on the slice engineering side, I am... So on the slice engineering side, I am using a Mosquito Magnum. And these are not cheap either. Although, it does say it's £129, which actually isn't bad. 3D Jake's doing it for yeah okay so these are 172 just for that particular part then you've got another hundred pounds on top of that for an LGX then you've got to put heater cartridge thermistor and another hot end on top of that as well so the price does start racking up and you'll probably expect to pay a good 300 pounds maybe 400 dollars on this particular setup uh, of course the Ava system does allow you to use multiple types and you know you've got to pick your poison with that um, I am going to probably put the Copperhead into my next build rather than using the um, Mosquito. But there is a really good high flow rate with the uh, Mosquito Magnum. So if you are looking to print fast, I would definitely look into some of those options on why and how and what that kind of is all going to kind of mean to you versus maybe like a E3D V6, which will be a slower flow rate. So my next couple of videos will be focusing on a couple of areas. Number one will be an idiot's guide to Clipper. And it's specifically for people like me that have never really used Clipper before. And I'm going to be speaking to Mikhail about how this goes together and what you should be looking at and what happens if things go wrong. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and click a like if you have enjoyed this video. And I'm hoping that you're going to be enjoying the next couple of videos that are coming out as well. I do have a Big Tree Tech octopus here as well so i will be looking to install this in either this machine or the 1.3 essentially they're going to be the same kind of ways of configuring things so if that's of interest to you again make sure you hit that subscribe button also if you're scouting around looking for information on the rat rig i did interview the guys behind the rat rig v core 3 along with michael from teaching tech i'll link the video in the description below so if you made it this far thank you very much for joining in and watching the video uh in closing what do you get for the money that you don't already have well first and foremost you do get an absolutely awesome printer which is completely unique in itself and i'd say secondly and probably more importantly you're investing in a product and people that have made something really really awesome the community is brilliant the people behind it are amazing and you will not be disappointed with this 3d printer you know you don't have to run it at a thousand millimeters per second to you know get the best results out of this i run this at around about 200 millimeters per second and it works great and i get great results out of it and it's certainly quicker than the majority of my printers that i have here and that i've tested and that i own so that works really well now i am going to touch on the voron thing i don't own a voron i've never seen a voron other than on youtube videos and stuff so i've got no opinion on it so people often ask what would you go for? Would you go for the Voron or the Rat Rig? I went for the Rat Rig because when I approached Rat Rig to do videos and to talk about their product and to investigate what I was trying to find, Rat Rig just had the best solutions at the time. That's not to say that Voron's bad or I'm dissing them or anything like that. It is what it is. And, you know, if I ever do come across one, great. You know, I've got no problems. I don't take uh, sides or allegiances with anybody. I just have to go on the facts that I've got right in front of me right now. And, and the Rat Rig guys are hugely investable. And, uh, you know, that's why I've got two of these things. So it's amazing. There is only one thing that I absolutely regret doing. And that was buying the 400 instead of the 500. So leave it there, I guess, for now. I am, as I say, going to be back with a Clipper video. I am going to be back with other videos as well. Time lapses and all that kind of crazy stuff. I'm still learning Clipper. I'm not that confident on it at the moment but you know the more reading that i do the more research that i do the more videos that i watch hopefully i'll be able to bring that compact it all and push it over to you on youtube thank you very much for joining me today hope you've enjoyed the video and hit that buy button you know what you need to do thank you very much we'll see you next time bye for now